Some time ago while visiting a STEM school, I was shown a very cool augmented reality sandbox. In case you don't know what an augmented reality sandbox is, it's basically a box of sand that sits on a table. A computer projects down an image on top of the sand, giving it a three-dimensional look. Then a motion camera tracks the movement of sand. When someone moves the sand, the image moves in real time to simulate digging in the sandbox. It allows the users to make mountains, rivers, and different terrains. It really is a fantastic tool for learning about geography and biomes. Anyway, this particular sandbox that I saw was purchased for slightly over $6,000. And while cool, I knew there was no way my school, let alone myself, could afford that. So I decided to build one myself, using Windows as my platform because it's so common. And yes, I did this for less than $350. But here's the real secret. It's actually pretty easy. So let's get started with this. Now, as I said, I built my sandbox for around $350. However, you can probably build yours for even less if you already have an old PC and a projector with an HDMI input laying around. Let's take a look at what you need to make this table. First, you're gonna need a PC, and it doesn't have to be a really fast one. In fact, the one that's running my sandbox is 12 years old. It's running a three gigahertz Core 2 Duo and eight gigs of RAM, coupled with a lousy AMD Radeon 7400 series graphics card. Now I had this computer lying around, but if you were to buy a similar one or even a faster computer, it would probably cost you around $100. I've calculated that already into this $350 budget. Next, you're going to need a projector, which is probably where most of the money is going to be eaten up in your budget. Ideally, a short throw projector would actually be great because you can make a bigger table and it takes up less headroom. However, those are very expensive. Instead, for my purposes, I actually ended up purchasing this LED projector off Amazon for $130. It works really well, it has an HDMI input, which was what I need, plus, more importantly, since it's LED, I could leave it on all day and not have to worry about the ball burning out like I would with a traditional projector. You're also going to need a Microsoft Kinect version 1, preferably the 1414 model, because it's more stable. It also will need a USB power adapter. I've bought several of these off eBay to build more tables and I've never paid more than $25 for a unit. In most cases, it's sold for an average of about $16, and that included the USB power. Another item you're definitely going to have to have for your sandbox is the sand. In my case, I ended up using the Santastic sand from Amazon. I used 50 pounds of it to put in there because it doesn't have any quartz, and it's very clean, very sterile, and very safe. Ideally, though, if you have the funds, you could use kinetic sand because kinetic sand is really moldable, and it gives us really cool three-dimensional look. In either case, what I would recommend you doing is lining the inside of the actual sandbox. I did it with a plastic shower curtain that I got from the Dollar Tree. This was to prevent any moisture from leaking through into the table and causing mold or to rot the actual wood of the table. I'm not gonna spend too much time on making the actual physical table because you can really make it out of anything, including a plastic tub for where the sand will sit in. Mine is made out of wood. If you want to see an accurate 3D model of the one I designed and built, I'll provide a link in the description. The important thing to remember is that the table has to have a 4 to 3 ratio because of the camera that sits on it. The Kinect camera only uses a 4 to 3 ratio. What this means is that if you're going to build a table, your table you could build 40 inches by 30 inches. However, in my case, I couldn't do that because I don't have a short throw projector, so I couldn't project the image that big. Instead. I made a smaller table using the 4 to 3 ratio. My table is actually 21 inches by 28 inches in the inside. That doesn't account for the wood on the outside. However, the projector will actually sit above the sandbox and hang and project down. The connect will sit on the pole. Well, in my case, actually I actually had to put mine in the center so I could have it more accurate. But you can put yours on the pole and it'll be just fine. You can also put your PC at the bottom or on the side if you'd like, if you have a laptop. And in my case, I actually just used some 2x4s, made a quick frame down here, and then attached a base so the computer could sit on it. And then, of course, I used the caster wheels here so I could roll it from room to room or move it around my classroom easier. So that's enough about the table. Let's actually get started with the software. So I've included all the files that you're going to need. Those can be found in the link description below. With that being said, the first thing you're going to need to do is download Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 to 2019. It's going to have to be an x86 version. You don't want the 64-bit version because it won't work correctly. 
even if your OS is 64-bit like mine, you're still going to want the 32-bit. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Agree to all the conditions. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to install that. Next step is we're going to install the Microsoft Software Development Kit, or known as the SDK. We're going to do version 1.7 because I found that version 1.7 is the most stable. Anything below 1.7 will work. However, I found 1.7 to be the most stable for me running Windows 10. So that's the one I've included in the link below. That's the one I would recommend. So go ahead and install that right now. So now that's been installed. Let's go ahead and connect the Microsoft Connect if you already haven't done so. Now that we have the Connect SDK 1.7 installed, let's go ahead and install three more drivers. We're going to have to use this tool called Zadig 2.4. That's also included in the files from the description. So we're going to go ahead and run Zadig. And when you run it, this is an executable file. You don't need to install anything. What you're going to be prompted with is a screen that comes up for Zadig. It's the interface. What you're first going to need to do is you're going to need to go under Options. You're going to hit List All Devices because right now none of the devices are listed. We're going to hit List All Devices, and now you're going to see a drop-down menu. So the first thing we're going to select is the Xbox camera. We're going to have to install three drivers. So now we're going to we have our driver here. We're going to change it to install the driver. We're actually this to version 1.2.60. Go ahead and hit Replace Driver. This may take a moment to do, and it's okay. Next, we're going to install the second driver that we need, which is going to be the Connect USB Audio Interface 2. We're going to use the same process as before. Drop down, hit Connect USB Audio Interface 2. Our driver's already there. Make sure you have that driver version 1.2.60. Hit Replace Driver. Once again, this may take a moment to install. The last one we have to install is the Xbox Motor Driver. The driver should already be there. Hit replace driver. This will take a moment to install. And there we have it. We have all the drivers necessary. So now let's go ahead into the software and run it, calibrate it for the first time. I've included the actual file folder with everything that you need, including any dynamic library files that may be missing from your computer. So you should be able to just go ahead and double click to run the Magic Sand software. The nice thing about this is it's an executable file that does not require any more installation. I actually like to put a shortcut on my desktop so students can get to it easier if they start it up or if I do. And you'll notice I put mine on my desktop right there. Anyway, go ahead and click that so we can set it up for the first time. You'll notice all this data pops up and if you have set yours up correctly, you're now going to see your Connect projecting onto the screen right here. The first thing we got to do is calibrate this and I will warn you that this thing can be kind of a pain to calibrate if you don't know what to do at first. I'm going to walk you through to show you some shortcuts on how to do this. Now in the lower left hand corner you're going to see when you start it up it says application state setup connect running. It's going to tell you that the ROI is not defined and then it's also going to tell you that the base plane has not been found. More importantly, it's going to say the projection of the Kinect has not been calibrated, and that's the part we're going to spend some time with. If you notice on my Kinect here, and I would recommend this for anybody else, you actually want the Kinect not to be just on the sand. You want it to go wider than that. You want it to take up pretty much the entire box. If you look at this box right here, my sandbox, these black edges are actually the sides. You want to be able to see most of that because that's really going to help for when we calibrate it. If you have it too close, it's not going to be able to calibrate it correctly. If you go too wide, it's not going to be too accurate for the calibration. So you re really want to put the entire box in there, top to bottom. With that being said, if you look on the upper right hand corner, you're going to see your frame rate. Then you're going to see the connect frame rates per second. That's about how much data is being sent to the program, which is a good thing. You want to have more frames per second. So next, what we're going to have to do is calibrate this so when we dig into the sand, the image will change along to match the movements that we're using. More importantly, the depth will match how deep we're going with our hands or, or with a shovel. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, and over on the right-hand side, you'll notice all these different tools. The first thing we want to do is hit Calibration. What we're going to do is hit Manually Define Sand Region. And what that allows us to do, we're going to draw a rectangle onto the, our sand. You basically want to make a rectangle that covers all of the white. Do not go outside of that. You can make it smaller if you have to, but don't go outside the projected area here. So I'm trying to make mine as close as I can. The rectangle will turn blue, letting you know that that's the area we're going to be trying to calibrate for. Next, we're going to hit this automatically calibrate connect and projector. 
When you do that, a screen's going to come up and say, please flatten the sand surface. You want to try to flatten this as best as possible. It doesn't have to be absolutely flat, but close enough, because otherwise your calibration is going to be off and you're going to have to redo this. So flatten sand. Once the sand is flattened, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And what you'll see is a series of grids pop up. They look like checkerboards on top of the sand. This is getting its initial data. Let that run its course here. This is a pretty fast process. With that being said, here's the next part. This is the part where people, a lot of people get tripped up on. You're going to have to cover the sandbox with a board. I used a simple white piece of foam board. I bought this from the Dollar Tree and it, I actually ended up making little legs for my piece of foam that are about 50 centimeters in height so I could put the foam board inside the sand to get a better calibration. So we're going to go ahead and put our foam board inside of here and then we're going to click OK. Now as you'll see we have a new series of images that are being projected onto the foam board. This is calculating the distance between the first set of images and the second set. This is what's really going to set it. You're going to notice if you're successful by looking in the bottom left hand corner. It's going to say calibration successful. If you get something that says the projection's too big, what you need to do is make sure your connect is actually a little bit wider so you can see more of the screen. The sand is flattened and that that board that you laid on top is smooth as well. So in this case, this worked the first time and I'm hoping that it does for you. It should if you follow these instructions. Now I'm going to remove the foam board. I'm going to run the software here where it says run. Go ahead and click that and now you're going to see the projected sand. I can make some actual adjustments to this to suit my needs a little bit better. So I'm going to go under advanced and the first thing I actually like to do is go ahead and hit the imprint outliers. That way it gets rid of any of the data that's not supposed to be there. You can actually also on the left side you can go up to here where it says display you can hit add contour lines you can take them away if you want you can change the distance of those lines and that's a pretty cool tool to have because if you're teaching your kids about topographical maps that use contour lines that will actually be a really good interactive map more importantly it will be a good math lesson as well so you can adjust those by just simply using the slider scale back here on the right side the next thing i recommend is changing the vertical offset changing the vertical offset means that you're basically changing the sea level so depending on how much sand you've got in your box I only use 50 pounds of sand for mine uh, what you're probably gonna want to do is change your sea level so if you want to have it so it when you dig there's more dirt you want to set your uh, you want your vertical offset to be higher if you want there to be more water you're gonna go less in this case I'm actually going to take mine, like I said, the vertical offset even higher. So you'll see I have more ground to start off with. So that's basically the sandbox right there. And if you come over here to the right side, you can actually see what it looks like projected into the sandbox. This is what is being projected in the sandbox right now. And so here, once again, we've got the vertical offset I'm adjusting. And then if I go back here and hit kinetic depth view, connect depth view, I'm going to be able to go back to the digital part. But let's go up here and go ahead and close the program. And the reason we did that is because we now have successfully saved that calibration file. We don't have to do this again. If you've done it once, you're, it's one and done. You can always go back and recalibrate it, but you probably won't need to. Go ahead and start the program back up using your desktop shortcut. And you're going to notice where we kind of left off at here. And unfortunately, you might get a little stressed out thinking that the calibration didn't load because now it's saying that none of those things are defined. However, all we have to do is come up here and click run and it will reload the calibration file take us right back to where we left off at and so that's how we can open and close the program and it automatically saves it I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna show you how some of the tools here will work in order for us to place maybe some of the games or put some of the fish or rabbits in so this is what it looks like from the projected viewpoint that's the digital viewpoint and I actually like to have my kids use shovels and you can see the water here, you can see some of the grass. We use the shovel to actually start digging. Nothing fancy, just from the Dollar Tree little shovel here and you start going through. And as I start, you'll notice now the image is changing. This is the digital view of how the image is being manipulated just using the actual sand. This image is also then projected onto the sandbox and you see you just go around digging in the sand 
You can change the, the depth, the height of the sand to give yourself some mountains. You've got your contour lines. And you just keep playing around there. Just have your kids play in the sandbox, so to speak. And you can make your, your lake, you can make your rivers, you can make whatever you want deeper. You can make your mountains higher. You can also come down here to the bottom right hand corner and you're going to notice there's something called fish. You can just go ahead and click there and you can add some fish and you're now going to notice you have all these different fish swimming around which are pretty cool. And the fish will only go in the water. I can add some sharks and the sharks when they're hungry will go after the fish there. And the sharks are a little bit bigger. And so this kind of also will teach you about food chains if you want. And you'll notice that the fish, when they get near the shark and the shark's hungry, they'll start turning red because they're starting to get a little scared. You can click on the rabbits, and the rabbits will start to appear, and the rabbits will only stay on land. And so as you move the terrain, if you, if you put more water, the fish will go in the new, new dugout areas so they can swim around. However, the rabbits now can only stay on those areas where the land is. So you can change the terrain to allow the rabbits to go through and stay on the land. You can change it so that the rabbits and the fish can interact, so to speak, by getting closer. Or, more importantly, there are other games in here that allow you to have what we call the mother fish or the mother rabbit, where you have to get the fish back to its mother. You have to get the rabbits back. So those are just some of the games that you can play in here. There's some map games as well. I've included a link in the description as well to give you all the instructions for the different games. But that's pretty much the Magic Sandbox. So I encourage you to use it in your classroom. You could use it at home. The only thing I would really recommend is that when you're done using the sandbox is to cover it up each night because kids have a tendency to want to play in the sand all the time. And you really want to make sure that the sand stays in the sandbox. But this has been The Sandbox. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching. <music>